All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for coming out. We are We Assist. We're a group of students from the University of Delaware. And over the couple of last few months, we've been working on hacking and modifying the Wiimotes and the Wii Fit boards to use them to help people with disabilities. Basically, our plan is to provide, provide uh, people with disabilities a better, more interface options with Windows operating system. Uh, there might be future plans of porting into other operating systems, but for now we're just coding it for Windows. Uh, what basically what we're doing is it's we have infrared head tracking, so it tracks the movement of a person's head, and then we also have uh, weight shift tracking to kind of to add to like with the Wii Fit board a little bit more mobility. We chose the Wii platform mostly because it's inexpensive. It's only about $40 per controller. And for that $40, you get a great infrared uh, tracking camera. Along, It tracks up to four different sources. And right now, we're only using one source for head tracking. But in the future, if we plan on doing gesture recognition or maybe even like sign recognition with the Wiimote, it would give us more options for more sources. Also. The Wiimote has Bluetooth capabilities, and so does the Wii Fit board. And this provides a really easy connection with our Wii, with the Wii controllers and the Wii Fit board. So we get we can get that information coming straight to our computer. And then there's fa there's other like back, or there's a lot, another uh, library that we're using, Wii Use, which takes all that Bluetooth information, all those hex values, and then converts it into functions which we can easily read and communicate with. Uh, at this point, I'm going to pass this on to my friend Cuddles over here, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the hardware aspect of the Wiimote. All right, so the Wiimote. Everyone's seen it. Uh, most of you guys have probably even used it. And basically, it's the controller for the Nintendo's Wii, which is the current system they have out now. And what we're working with primarily is the infrared camera in the front. And that camera detects infrared light from the sensor bar. And the sensor bar doesn't even have any sensors in it at all. It's just two clusters of infrared lights on both sides. And both sides have five infrared lights each. So to the camera, it's just two infrared blobs on each side of the sensor bar. And with that, it allows it to triangulate your position to tell where you are in relation to the screen. And it actually tracks up to four sources. So you can actually have two sensor bars, and it would detect both, like all four blobs of infrared. Now, for the hardware, here's actual pictures of the chip inside the Wii remote. And here are the buttons. Uh, this is the adapter where you connect the nunchuck and the Guitar Hero controller, Bluetooth, and the infrared camera, which is what we're primarily working with. Now, the infrared camera supports a resolution of 1,024 by 768 pixels, which is pretty good compared to most webcams you can find out there, which that are for $40 that only produce about 640 by 480 pixels. So not only are you getting a good controller, but you're also getting a pretty good infrared micro camera. And the Bluetooth chip is a Broadcom 2042 chip, and it's not 100% compatible with HID. Now what HID is, it's, it's a standard for Bluetooth. So basically, um, it's made to connect to the Wii, right? So you can connect it to pretty much any infrared uh, Bluetooth receiver but it won't work. It'll work, but you'll get like these weird errors or unforeseen like errors. You'll be able to work through them, but you'll get like finicky controls. So we had to work with that as well. And here are our glasses, which, yeah. So we made that out of just basic goggles and we constructed a circuit for infrared sensors or transmitters. And uh, they provide a 180 degree angle of infrared so you can turn your head a little bit and the Wii remote will still detect you and it's pretty energy efficient only one and a half volts and 50 milliamps and here's the actual circuit you have the 1.5 volt battery in series with two infrared diodes in parallel to each other so they both get the same amount of voltage and then the resistor in series with all of it giving them the 50 milliamp current needed and then here's our little lab setup 
it's pretty much exactly what you see here. And uh, it's pretty ghetto, but it gets the job done. And now I'm going to pass it back on to Robert, who's going to talk about the software end of our project. All right, so here's a little bit about the software. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're using the WeUse library, and that is coded for the C programming language. Uh, basically, it's a single-threaded, non-blocking library, and it's pretty simply coded, like I stated before. Most of uh, the functions are self-explanatory. It's like set LED to turn an LED off, like set it to one and stuff like that. So it's mostly self-explanatory. And if you do have any questions about it, there's a great there's the website we got it from, weuse.net, has tremendous documentation on it. And it's just, it's all really basic to understand. I mean, we understand it, and we didn't really know anything much about the Wiimote coming into this. So after we got that, we decided that, OK, so we need to have C programming for our Wiimotes and C programming for the Wii Fit board. But how are we going to have them run at the same time? And then our idea for that, after much thinking, was how about we run multi-threads? So right now we have one main program that creates, which is written in C++, that creates two sub-threads, or two, like, yeah, two sub-threads, which run the Wiimote and the Wii Fit board to get the information and then relay it back to our C++ program. The reason we have a main C++ program is so that we can access other code, such as this, such as uh, gesture recognition code that's being worked on at our school. And it, since that's code in C++, we need to have another code that can communicate with it easily. Uh, so one of the main features of our of our uh, product is the head tracking aspect, and what it is is like I, we have the, we have an infrared source like Larry talked about mounted on a pair of safety glasses which the user puts on his or her head. Now the two Wiimotes you have a Wiimote position to your left and your right and they pick up your positioning on an X Y coordinate and then through a little bit of geometry convert it to three dimensional positioning with your X Y and Z. We use the X and the Y coordinates right now just for mouse for mouse movement and positioning. But our ideas for the Z for the Z coordinates might be when a user uh, leans in close to the computer, maybe magnify the screen or make the mouse disappear. So if you're reading something and trying to lean in close, you won't have a mouse in your way. Uh, at this time, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about the three-dimensional positioning and show you a little demo. All right, so this is my main screen. Hold on, Josh. I got some screen. All right, so this demo is basically we made something simple, and it's just it creates like it's a just a couple images. It's a rocket ship in space, and it'll show you how we can move it left and right, up and down, and the Z, it'll also demonstrate the z-axis by getting bigger and smaller. All right, first thing I need to do is tell the program what the distance is between our Wii modes. Currently, we have them at 36 inches apart. It's whatever the user, user decides, but we found that 36 creates a, a decent viewable range from both Wii modes. And then I also have to tell which Wii mode is to the left and which Wii mode is to the right. So first off, I'll say three because we have Wiimote three to the to the right and we do that by lighting up the LEDs to tell which Wiimote's which. And then Wiimote two is to the left. The reason there's three, it says there's three different sources because we also have the Wii Fit board connected which would act as Wiimote one. Now that everything's connected and ready to go, I put on my glasses and very fashionable, as 
grungy states. But uh, as soon as I push the up button, that'll trigger the infrared detection to start. Or it should. Is it switched? Yeah, there it is. There it is. It's on? All right, you gotta tell me what I'm looking. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's on. All right. So I, I can't. I don't have. It's presentation mode, so I can't really see the screen. <laughs> so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move left and right. It should be moving left and right. I hope so. Yeah, you're good. It's actually moving in circles. Good. Wait, I'm not done, guys. <laughs> All right. So I'm moving up and down, and it should be moving up and down. I hope. Bear with me if it's not. You're good, you're good, you're good. All right, and then lastly, I try to zoom in and out. Is it getting bigger and smaller? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so that's a three-dimensional position. Sorry about that. It's more convenient when you're doing it on the screen in front of you, so. <laughs> All right, I'll just close out of that. You guys can connect back to the computer. Wait. All right, you can take it out. With the Mac, you can see it on the screen at the same time that it's up there. Ouch. <laughs> Man, this computer's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't want to know it. <laughs> What's that? Oh. Well, that's a nice yeah, so Mac. <laughs> Give it a second. What were you saying about your Mac? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> there it is. Now we're good. Now we're good. All right. <laughs> all right. We're all good. All systems go. Okay. So back to the presentation. Hope you guys enjoyed that. But um. So how does it work? I'm guess that's probably what's all in your mind now. Is how exactly are we doing it? And what we're doing is we have, as you see up here, we have our screen, and then we have a Wemo to the left, Wemo to the right. And they're both pointed at about 22 and a half degrees out, or I guess, towards me. Sorry about that. All right, they're both pointed at about 22 and a half degrees towards me and up vertically. So that kind of creates more of like a, a background. Let's see if I can use this. It creates like this background at zero degrees right here. And that also works for the y direction and the z direction. So saying that all the positioning starts there and then goes off. Um, as far as finding the angles, since there's a resolution, since we found out the resolution is 1024 by 768, well, we were thinking, well, if, the x is gonna, if your x coordinate is going to go from zero to 1024, why not scale that down to zero to 45? And when you do that, then you have a 0 to 45 degree angle, which the Wii mode is set up to project. So we did that for both the X and the Y to get our angles vertically and horizontally. After we got the angles, it was just a little bit of geometry from there. Uh, we calculate, we created this formula or derived this formula. And first we split up into two triangles and each, and we first found the X direction of this triangle right here. And then from there, we found out the other x direction, combined them both, and you get your x coordinates, which is the pretty much the it's based off the distance from your left Wiimote. After getting after we with one of our squares, then we were able to derive what the z and the y coordinates were with another with a little bit more geometry using the tangent function. Since we had the adjacent side, why not use the tangent function to get the opposite side for both? the x and the r for both the z and the y and as i stated before they're just they're from they're the distance from this little zero degree mark right here and up but you all, right now as you see we also have a displacement of about 14 inches and that's just to say we don't want we don't want the user to have his head laying on the table when he has to use the Wii remote so you got to bring him up a bit so so that he or she can comfortably use it all right, uh, at this point, I'm going to do another demonstration about the mouse control.
Uh, yeah. One sec. Mike seems to have died. Oh, now it's good. Oh. Okay, never mind. All right, it's good. Sorry about that. Okay, again, bear with me because I don't have the screen in front of me, but I'm going to try to demonstrate the movement of the mouse movement of a mouse with the x and the y coordinates. What? It's going to be hard. All right, again, I got to say the distance. It's 36 inches. And then we have Wiimote 3 to the right. Remember, folks, he's doing this blind, ready for the flip. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm from the circus. Blindfolded. All right, and I got to hit up to activate the control. Is it working at all? Yeah. Wait, where is it? <laughs> yeah, well. Is it moving around? Uh, is it moving around? No. You're just going up and down. That was a scroll wheel function. All right, how are we doing now? Oh. Oh. All right, now how are we doing? There you go. All right, there we go. So I'm moving the mouse around, or I hope I am. I hope I'm moving the mouse around. Right through the boxes. I I can't through the boxes. All right. Move my head accordingly. Just go to the next one. Okay. Well, usually we demonstrate moving the box. If you guys stop by. Hardware Hacking Village or Q&A or something. We'll try to demonstrate that there, but I can't really see the screen, so sorry about that. All right, so uh, I'm I'm Josh. I'm Grungy, whatever you want to call me. It's cool. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about how we use the uh, Wii Fit board and our whole system here. Uh, and we were kind of just kicking around one day. We got the tracking and everything, and it's you can move the mouse around like you just saw, and that's pretty nifty and everything. But you can't really do anything once you get to that spot on the screen, which kind of is the point of a mouse is to actually interact with the computer. So to, to add that extra functionality into the, the whole system, we, uh, we're, you know, we're trying to think about ideas and everything. We asked our professor and he had some cool ideas about this. And to, to do right click, left click and all the normal Windows functions, we we're like, all right, maybe you can't use your hands or as well, you know, maybe you have multiple sclerosis or something like that. But you, you should be able to, it doesn't take too much to be able to shift your weight around and that, you know, it, it takes a lot to get yourself not to have the um, accuracy to do that, you know. That's most people, I think. So what we did was we realized that the Wii Fit board has pressure sensors in each of its feet so you can tell where a person's leaning and Nintendo uses that in like their yoga programs and their aerobics and stuff like that uh, to do that. So basically the features we added were uh, right click, left click, scrolling, and actually even opening the gesture program on in our whole thing. To do right click, left click, and scrolling, that's just, um, you use basically a Windows function called send input, and you can just look that up in uh, MSDNA or check out our code when we release it. And um, to do the actual gesture program, I thought that was a really cool part about this was you have to install what's called a Windows hook. And uh, what that does is it sits in like the message queue in Windows and watches all the messages go by that are going to all the windows. And it says, oh, I'm looking for this. That's not what I want until it finds the one it's looking for. And then says, oh, I'm actually going to process this message. And uh, 
that's what tells the gesture program to sort of open up and let the user, say, do a circle and open up Microsoft Word and the speech recognition software, you know, whatever they want to open so you don't have to go through all the menu-driven stuff. And I think that added a whole new level of functionality. Uh, also, bonus points if you know what that error code means in Microsoft uh, compiler. I get that one a lot. So, do you want to do that? Yeah, I see this. All right, so we're going to uh, attempt to do the last demo because we'll see how Rob, good Rob is. Here you go. All right, so uh, originally, originally we were going to do Duck Hunt and just try to demonstrate shooting a, like, the old NES game and, like, shooting the duck, moving your head and clicking, but I just realized that I can't see the screen, so it's not going to be too effective. <laughs> you can stop by later if you want to try. But, so, I knew I, I just came up with this idea, or I guess I think I heard a friend of mine say at one time, how about use paint? So we'll try to use paint to just show that we're clicking and moving around. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's calibrating now. Let's see if we can do this. This is without hands. Yeah. All right, tell me how to move the screen. That's great. Oh, oh, you made a little. All right, yeah. 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 All right, finish it up. All right, now, sir. What? Are we good? Yeah, that would have been fun. All right, yeah. We, uh, sort, of, sort of just want to thank everybody that was uh, made like using the Wiimotes possible and we use and uh, all the independent hackers out there. Thanks. All right. We should be... Keep an eye on this website. We should be posting uh, our source and all that stuff in the next couple months. Just keep an eye out and thank you all for coming. We thank you all. Uh